Samuel Pellegrini of Brazil 2. The Battle for Souls by Demons in Prisons. Hello, my name is Samuel Pellegrini. I'm going to give my report. I always dreamed of preaching the gospel in places where nobody wants to go. Before the congregations and churches, it is easy to preach the word. But I wanted to preach the word to the sick that are not in churches, but in hospitals. Those who evangelize and rescue trapped souls are waging a spiritual battle. This work of evangelism is not for anyone to be lifted, and you have to be a warrior. They demons that are in these lives will turn their attention to you. When they are expelled, they will face you guys. They can show up in your room the same way they appeared in mine. When I kicked out a legion of an evil devil, the demons surrounded my house. Many entered my room to intimidate me. They were also demons on the roof of my house and others were flying over the house. I cast out a demon of a skeleton shape from a woman. That same demon tried to use my uncle to kill me. Souls are dying and evangelicals fight for audiences and positions within the churches. Yet the field of the harvest outside the temples is great. Today, we don't preach the gospel out of churches. The souls that are out of temples need the gospel more than those who are in churches, and many souls don't have the strength to go to church. They're discouraged. And God showed me the demons trapping souls in order to stop them from coming to church. Souls have no strength to go to church and stay home to carry out their evil actions because of discouragement from going to church. In truth, those souls who don't have the strength to go to Church are chained spiritually. I saw several black curls around their legs so as not to let them go to church. In the churches of prosperity, the demons don't hold these people and they let them go. In churches of sanctification, they don't let these souls go to church. These souls are bound by demons and only go where they want them to go since they cannot come to church. Brothers should go to them. If you are a living church, you have to go to those who are arrested and chained by demons and break these bondages and cast out demons that do not allow people to go to church. I invited a boy to come to church and he never came. I thought to myself, he didn't want anything. With God, I won't mind him and talk to him anymore. I walked away from him. But God bothered me by telling me to go to his house. When I got there, I saw chains on his legs stopping him from coming to church, and the demon who bound him in chains was beside him. I said a prayer and the demon manifested and said, I would not let him go to church. That day, I realized it wasn't him who didn't want to go to church, but the devil who doesn't want him. He spoke excitedly and said, I wanted to come to church. And when the day came, I didn't have the strength to come. In truth, he was tied up by this demon that I expelled. But when he began to attend the church, he gave way to the devil returning to do the will of the flesh. As a result, he left the church and stayed in the world. And God showed me the demon that I cast out going back to his life. After a year away from the church, this demon brought seven more demons to reinforce his hold. This boy is now in prison and became demon-possessed. He had difficulties to establish himself in God's way. But now with seven demons, it will be more difficult for him to return and his discouragement will be seven times more. I saw in a vision seven demons chaining him. The first time I had seen him it was only one demon chaining him. Once he deviated seven demons chaining him and I have an insecurity that he would not return. There came a time my brother deviated and entered the world of crime, working in the drug trade. He was arrested, and my concern to save him was so great that it aroused in me the desire to preach. The gospel in my city's prison. I was obliged to take the chaplaincy and prison course to have access to the prison. When I finished the course in 2005, I started doing the work of God in the prison of my city as a chaplain. When I began to evangelize in prison, 
I prayed fervently not to be murdered in that environment. When getting deeper in prayers, I started to have visions just like my grandfather. When I entered the prison from the offices where the employees worked in prison entrances, I started to see demons and they were everywhere in the prison. The Holy Spirit revealed to me that those demons were the spirits of death, theft and family destruction. I saw that the demons of death look like skeletons. They used many men who are there to take the lives of people in the world. The demons of theft that I saw also used men to commit theft that bring them to jail and the demons of destruction use trafficking men into addicting young people on drugs, selling drugs to them destroying the youth. The thief comes only to kill, steal and destroy. I took a brother to help me in the work of God in prison. Demons manifested in our prayers. People fall in demonic manifestation in that demonic place. These people in jail are the worst men on earth who carry out the devil's strategy to kill, steal and destroy, imitating their master's works. Satan's bloodthirsty men cannot stay in society because they take innocent lives. I saw a man over there that was in prison for several years. He told me, when I leave here, I'm going to kill a lot of people out there. I will do things that I never did. I am already commanding some murders in my neighborhood from inside here. The man told me that he killed several partners. This man had a bloodthirsty spirit and feels no love for anyone. When he takes a person's life that is normal for him as if he was stepping on some insect. I prayed for him and legions of demons manifested in his body. These were bloodthirsty and cruel demons. His nickname was Kadena. The demons wanted to kill him and squeeze him. I preached the word with my companion and the company started to hear the word accepted Jesus. I saw a black shadow entering another detainee's body and he was wanting to murder the other. Who was hearing the word? While in prison, my brother, Raphael Pellegrini, reconciled to God by returning to Jesus' way. He saw a demon that tried to use an inmate against his life, but God gave him deliverance. That man did not manage to do anything against my brother. He said that the demon of death stood near his. Sell and looked at him with hatred for having returned to the way of Jesus. An angel on the roof expelled the demon that was intimidating my brother. This was the fruit of the church prayer out here. The prison does not change anybody but makes the person more hardened. There is favoritism here. A politician steals millions of money and has good treatment with one cell with a pool and television with channels by subscription eating the best food. The poor share the cell with several prisoners getting in the squeeze sleeping in uncomfortable beds. Meals are few and do not kill hunger. Being treated like animals, when they leave the prisons they are still imprisoned in their hatred for the political system and will take revenge. Some are afraid to go back to jail and live a life of misery and will prefer not to return to crime. After returning to the Lord my brother started doing services in his prison. He was warned of the fury of the demons against the inmates who heard the word of God that they would suffer from those who did not accept Jesus. The demons of stubbornness and those who refuse to believe will go after those that are accepting Jesus. These inmates will murder those who received the word of God and those claiming to have accepted Jesus. The demons did not play, and my brother saw the demons working inside the prison in the hearts of inmates. My brother has a list of inmate names. When I visited him, I took these names to my pastor to pray and the pastor prayed for these inmates through the list. My brother said the pastor's prayer was so strong that when he gathered with detainees, they fell into demonic manifestation in their cells. Some newly converted inmates expel those demons several times when they pray. There were Balls of fire entering his cell reaching neighboring cells over there. The pastor was counter-attacking demons of prison in the spiritual battle. He did not need to be in there for his prayers reached the lives of inmates even being away from the prison. In the spiritual world, 
there is no distance to cast out demons. Of course, we must enter prisons. To preach and fight with the demons that are there but those who cannot go to the prisons can. Pray wherever they are. The prisons are strongholds of evil spirits. Entering their nest, we must. Be clothed with the power of God and praying for some lives there. In the year 2008 in a vision, I saw the prison. Blood was dripping across the floor like a flood, and various pieces of bodies strewn on the floor. It looked like the detainees had been quartered in the prison. I smelled blood and meat burned. I heard gunshots of great decibels, and my ears could not withstand the explosion. I fasted on another day asking God to deliver my brother and not to let those visions become accomplished in the prison where I was doing the work. And God told me, this vision will not be fulfilled in the prison of your brother and will be fulfilled in other prisons. These visions were in 2008 and in 2010. I did more evangelism in prison. My brother served his sentence and won his freedom in 2009. God led me to preach in other places of drugs pushing and I started to evangelize in those places. If you are not under God's coverage, it is risky. You may be murdered. You must have the anointing to go to these places. I already lived a life of prayer to do these thorny works. When I entered the drug pushers area to preach, I saw there were millions of bloodthirsty and homicide demons, demons of drug trafficking and even demons that promote all types of crimes and evils. I saw that each area has a demon and they are not equal in their appearances. In 2012, I was evangelizing the areas of drug pushers and then I went to an old abandoned asylum. In 2013, I went to do the work in the homes of recovery of drug addicts and alcoholics. From 2013 to 2014 and 2015, I did the work of evangelism in the orphanages. In 2016, I did the work of evangelism in the villages. In 2017, I worked among the indigenous people in the Amazon. From 2017 to these days, I do evangelism in homes. This work is easier than in prisons. I saw the same demons of homicide, robbery, drugs, and addictions that are in prisoners' lives are also operational in many homes. They use family members to kill, steal, and destroy. The demons of passion use husbands to kill their wives, I rebuke those demons. I rebuke demons of drugs inside a family. I rebuke demons of the vices, of alcoholism, in homes. And in the asylums of the elderly. I oppose the spirits of suicide and the bitterness that many. Elderly people have for being abandoned by their families. These spirits are also in orphanages where children feel abandoned. I attack wicked spirits in a. Six-year-old girl prostitute who was bitter for not living with her parents. I cast out a murderous spirit from a boy in an orphanage. This demon had put thoughts of revolt in his mind entertaining the idea of going out killing people when he becomes an adult. God revealed to me that the family that adopted this boy will be murdered by the boy. He would kill the adoptive parents as they were not his biological parents, and the boy would seek out his biological parents to take revenge for abandoning him. I confronted those spirits in the orphanage and also that in the girl of prostitution and I battled with evil spirits within asylums and recovery homes. I fought in battles with demons of drug addiction. In the rehabilitation homes of drug addicts. I contended with spirits who are waiting for those who are hospitalized to leave the hospital so that they will have them back in drugs. The devil doesn't play and his demons are securing their presence everywhere. I saw millions of demons in orphanages in homes and recovery homes. I cast them out of drug addicts where they were legions of demons working to win those souls. Why are these demons in asylums, orphanages, prisons, or places of recovery? They go where? They have souls of men to reap while the evangelicals despise those places. The demons mark territories that belong to them. I don't like to preach in churches. 
I will easily go to where no one wants to evangelize. I will not so easily preach in churches to rebel Christians who don't want to leave the world. It is a waste of time. In these places where I went, the people are thirsty for the word. And when they accept Jesus as their Savior, they really accept the word differently from those in the church who hear the word. And yet continue in rebellion. My vision of carnage in 2008 took nine years to materialize and it was not in the prison where I did the work. After my 2008 vision, several massacres took place in prisons. In 2016 massacre took place in Monte Cristo Penitentiary and it looked like scenes from my vision. I saw demons that possess inmates to kill other inmates out of cruelest ways. The demons gave the force to those who had quartered other inmates and said to them, All the atrocities that you do with your fellow prisoners, we do all of them on souls in hell. When you set fire to each other, we also set fire on souls in hell. And you think everything you do here is playing with fire. It is an imitation of hell. You are equal to our wickedness and keep copying atrocities that happen in hell. When those inmates died, the demons took their souls under the earth to hell. That was the vision I had of the massacre of the cities of Natal and Manaus. A riot at the Agricultural Penitentiary of Monte Cristo occurred on October 16, 2016 in Boa Vista, Roraima, Brazil. At least 25 inmates died during the riot, with seven of them beheaded and six were burned to death. An estimated 100 relatives of inmates that came during visiting hours were taken hostage for a brief time before being freed by police. The riot was caused by a clash between Two rival gangs. The riot was one of several that occurred in Brazilian prisons during 2016. At least 26 prisoners were killed in fighting between rival gangs at the largest prison in the northeastern Brazilian city of Natal. It took 14 hours for police to regain control of Alcaca's jail. On January 1, 2017, 56 prisoners were killed after a riot at the Inigio Jobim, Compaio. Penitentiary Complex in Manaus, Amazonas, in the northern region of the country.